I totally took on this crazy project of trying to follow us around in different <laughs> ways and, um, and trying to figure out how to put this film together in a way that it really talked to people that were both in the Native community and not in the Native community. And so uh, I really appreciate all the work that she did um, and trying to get that figured out and all the hours and hours of uh, time that she spent doing the editing and getting other folks involved in producing it and producing it with her. And so Michelle, you should probably come and talk with us about anything about the film. Well, what do you have to do? <laughs> Mrs. Duke, I get a packet of your seats. Come and see our man. Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Wichak Piluta Candelaria, Red Star. Kaha uh, Ramson Aloni, Kaha Apache. I'm Ramson Aloni and Apache. Uh, I'm the newly elected vice chairman of Sacred Sites Protection, Rights of Indigenous Tribes. Yes, elected. I also question your sanity. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm also just a, a local tribal resistor, uh, self proclaimed savage and uh, a participant in the movement. Uh, a lot of people like to refer to us as leaders, but I'd like to refer to myself as a doer. And uh, this is my leader here, Karina. Uh, I, I don't have a particular way that we were gonna do this, so I thought that if you guys had questions about stuff, we could answer those questions. And I know that Ruta was gonna talk about some stuff tonight too. Um, and so we're willing to answer questions about the film, about the work that we're doing, anything like that. Um, and I know that Autumn also has some other, another film that she, uh, she's going to show. So <coughs> it's big, take up all the time. <coughs> all right. No questions. Like yeah. <laughs> Hi. Thank you Hi. for being here. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit on where the Land Trust project is at right now. And also, um, do you have certain spots in yeah, so the question is where, where are we with the land trust right now? So the land trust right now, we're really in the midst of um, putting together the 501c3, and all the work that we've done so far has not been under a nonprofit. It's all been grassroots. The occupation was grassroots. The walks around the Bay Area for four years was all grassroots. Everybody pitched in and did all of that kind of stuff. The only way to do, a 50, uh, to do a land trust in this country is to do a 501c3, right? And so our problem has always been is that we don't want to follow that whole nonprofit industrial complex and lose the flavor of what the work is and all of that kind of stuff. So we're definitely looking for people that want to do that kind of stuff because some people like that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> but I really want to be involved in the work and really doing the struggle and all of that kind of stuff, you know, continue to do that. But we are working on that. We're hoping to have the paperwork together and done and submitted by June of this year. Um, we're working with a group of folks that you've seen inside the film. Those were all professors that we were sitting with that are really interested in doing the work with us. And we have a group of Native and uh, non-Native allies that we've been working with for years that as another group, we're gonna bring them together to talk about the mission and vision statement and pull all of that kind of stuff together. Uh, there's a website that's in the mix, I hope, really soon where we'll have a PayPal and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but really just looking for people. Now, what does a land trust look like? And that's what we've been kind of grappling with for the last year, is what does that look like? And so, like Janella said, it's little pockets of land here and there, right? So land trust is really interesting because people can donate land to a land trust, and they can actually live on there until they die, you know, and then you can have the land afterwards, or they can just give you land that they don't want anymore and have a tax write-off. Um, you can buy the land as a land trust or you could actually have cultural easements. And that's what happened up at Segorite. There was a cultural easement that was created, and it's the very first one that was created between a city, a park district, and a tribal entity. Now there was a tribal entity that came in to Segorite around day 99 of the 109 days, and they signed a compact with uh, the city of Vallejo and GVRD, and they paid them $30,000, and they created this contract where they, none of them could make decisions about development on that land without the other two's rights, right? Or without the other two's uh, permission. So what that means is there is a cultural easement. There's a tribal entity that's involved in it. Now the problem, what was problematic with that is that at the time that that was all going on, 
we didn't understand that we could have actually done a land trust at that time, and we could have done that exact same thing. Um, and so the tribal people that came in and did the land trust actually allowed GBRD and the city of Vallejo to do some of the desecration that we did not want to happen, right? So we learned a big, huge lesson in that kind of a way. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing the land trust now. You know, the other thing that we want to do is, is create those cultural easements with people like, like East Bay Regional Park, who owns 144,000 acres of our land. But we cannot get on that land without going through red tape and asking permission to go on it and have ceremonies. So we want to create those cultural easements so that we have the same rights to go on to our land and have ceremony. So there's a bunch of different ways that we're going to do that, right? So there's pockets of land that's in Oakland and different places all over the place that we were looking at and we're hoping to create. But these are spaces that we want to engage people in, you know? And that's one of the things that I always think about is that there's these little kids in East Oakland, because I live in the bottoms in the East Oakland, you know? And even though there's all this park up in the hills, those kids down there never get up there, you know? And so there's pieces of land that's right there in our neighborhoods that's not being open for young folks, for folks that, for elders, for people that just want to be away, you know? And one of the things that Segorte really was inspiring about was that everybody, it doesn't matter what your background was, you were welcome on that land, so long as you came in a good way, that everyone had something to offer. And I really think that that's what creating these land trusts are about. It's about creating space for folks that live in urban areas to reconnect to the land so we can remember who we are. So that's kind of where the land trust is. We're hoping to get it all started and up and going, um, hoping that you know, we'll have a lot of folks that are interested in doing that. You know, one of the great things I think about Segorite too is that there was a lot of young families that came there you know, that didn't have space for their kids to run around in. They didn't have a place to be. There was folks that were there that were homeless that came and they had a place to be. And I think that that's what we really need is to have those spaces and places in the cities that we all can join in and be a part of, you know? It's part of a healing thing. That's the answer to the question, yes. <laughs> Do you have any um, support from federally recognized tribes that want to work in solidarity with your uh, land trust issues? I know there's like, there's like gaming in the Bay Area and people like uh, federally recognized tribes are getting like lots of land. Is, is, there, is there any possibility to work with them to get like a, a plot or is that out of the question? I, I don't think anything's out of the question. We haven't approached any federally recognized tribes in, in that kind of manner. I think one of the obstacles of getting federal recognition as an urban tribe, even though that's not what I'm working on, is that you actually have to have permission from the surrounding tribes. And some of the surrounding tribes that are gaming tribes don't actually want to give Ohlone permission to be here anymore because it takes away, they think that somebody else is going to bring a game, gaming in to the Bay Area, right? So that, there's a conflict for them as a sovereign nation to even recognize us as, as being here, even though they know that we're their neighbors. No, that anybody. Like there's this place in East Oakland right across from Parker Elementary School, if you guys know where that is, it's like on, like close to MacArthur and 87th or something like that, 80, 84th or something like that. And I was over there because I do school and uh, do work in the school. So last week I was there, and I was just telling Will about that today. There was this piece of land that's just open right between two apartment buildings, mm -hmm. and it has some uh, some what is it called uh, artichokes, like wild artichokes growing inside of there. I was like, that's a great piece of land, and wouldn't that be great to work with those neighbors that are in those apartment buildings there to figure out something to do with that that would be really healing, you know? And so, yeah, anywhere, we're looking for any piece of, the thing is, is that when you grow up in Oakland and you know that this is your place, and then nobody really realizes that, you know, you got folks from all over the world that come to the Bay Area because it's a great place to be, and they don't know the land that they're on, it's like really kind of nerve wracking, you know? So most of my life I've been trying to teach folks about who we are, you know, in the Bay Area, and let people know. 
And so isn't that great if we come together as different communities across all of these barriers to create something that's healing for all of us and recognize the ancestors that continue to be in this land. Yep. Um, I heard that there's something called an honor tax that the Waya or Wea people are doing up north. And um, is that something that could be replicated down there for the week? That would be an awesome thing to do, yes. And I, that's the kind of support that we're really looking at for our allies to work with us to do those across the things. and. Um, Dixie might want to talk a little bit about what it is, but an honor tax is, is just to tell folks that, hey, you're on tribal land. These are the people that whose land you're on, and maybe you should give them some rent, you know? Um, and I think that, you know, that's an awesome way of, of doing that, you know? Um, so, yeah, so that one, that might be a really great way to put it up on the website if you'd like to honor, do some honor, honor tax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last week, the mayor um, voiced support for the and I think the only thing I've heard in the conversation is in this context of commercial development. Um, so I think like this everybody being in mind, like uh, having keeping that in mind um, as a potential for reclaiming that land um, would be a huge thing in open. I didn't hear about that, but thanks for forgiving, bringing, me, bringing that up to my attention. That's really great. Yeah. You're going to get rid of the 980 freeway? That's, that's <laughs> She's in support of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's cool to know. I didn't hear about that. Thank you. All righty. Yes. Is there an Ohlone Center just where people can learn about your culture and history and know about actions and events and all that sort of stuff that's going on? Is there a center? Like a, a yeah, like a, a building? Or is it, I, I, I want to know more and find out more and I'm just wanting to know. Um, okay, so there's not a center because we're not federally recognized, so we don't have any kind of funding to do anything like that. But the land trust, huh? They can't see us. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're invisible. They have a Jewish center, they have an African American center, they have an Asian American center, they have a Filipino center, they have all of these centers here in the Bay Area, but none for the very indigenous people that are from here. I think that's something to really think about, that it's so open to having so many centers for so many other cultures that are here but that there is not even one rinky-dink place for the Ohlone people. So there are American Indian, so like the Intertribal Friendship House is a, an Indian center, but it's, it's for people that are from all different tribes. So like um, there was a, the whole relocation project that happened that the federal government tried to get people off of their reservations and into urban settings so they could take over their land. So folks like that have Intertribal Friendship House, which is the oldest urban American Indian Center in the country, and that's on Fifth Ave. But what Luta is saying is that there is no place that is culturally relevant to Ohlone people. And one of the things that we could do at, by creating this land trust is to actually do that. One of the things that I really want to do is that when you looked at that piece, of that, prop, uh, that map that was in the movie, it showed all of this swath of land right across the coast that have no federally recognized tribes on it, right? And within that swath of land, there's this whole Ohlone territory from down to Monterey all the way up to the Carquinas. Those are all Ohlone territories, and there's no federally recognized tribes there. But not only that, is that there is no roundhouses, which is our spiritual places and places where we dance, that is in that Ohlone territory. So one of the things that we will be doing while we create this Ohlone land trust is to create one of those places that our children and our grandchildren can come back to dance and sing and do ceremony in. So that's one of the other goals, is to have this roundhouse built on our own land. I forgot to bring water today. Yes? What's going on in the Indian Canyon? I was in the so Indian Canyon is a piece of land that actually Anne-Marie Sayers is connected to by family. <laughs> oh, you? Oh, you were going to talk? No, I was just saying so. Oh. <laughs> I was like, somebody can talk besides me. Um, Anne-Marie Sayers was able to, she has an incredible story that I hope you guys all look it up. She's uh, Moots and Ohlone, and she was able to actually um, reclaim this piece of land. So it's the only land that's owned by Ohlone people that's, um, that's a part of Ohlone territory at all. 
that is originally given to the Ohlone people. So her ancestors actually um, went into this canyon into hiding and was able to, thank you so much, where'd that come Dixie. from? <laughs> All right, wow, angels. <laughs> But she was able to do this because there was this law that allowed um, Indian people to reclaim their land a long time ago, but she had to be able to prove that she was able to live off of the land. So she actually had pygmy goats there as a um, business for a while in order for her to be able to live off of the land, right? So she was self-sustaining. And then she was able to get the land. So she has incredible projects that go there. She offers it up for people to do ceremony there. She has storytelling things that go there. She has a community that she's built up with San Francisco State University students that go there and do work. Um, so she does a lot of different things there. But truly, it is her family land. It's not totally Ohlone people land, right? So um, it's Anne-Marie and it's Cannon. And, um, and I don't know who else is in the family, her, her relatives that actually are a part of that land. But it's not a, it's not a, a um, tribal land owned piece of property. You guys want to ask Michelle anything about the film? <laughs> <laughs> I see she just takes off running. I don't know. Nobody has a question. All right. I, 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 all right. Uh, can, can, your, can that film be featured on other uh, public access stations? That uh, it's not like how can we advocate for it to be played on other uh, other channels? Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, I'm not sure right now, because I definitely don't want to have an exclusive thing with CBS about it, but the station that showed it first is going to partner with me to try and get it to national PBS if we can, which is like a whole different thing. Like, I don't know if it will, I don't know what will happen, and it's going to cost me money, so that's fun. But, um, but we're going to try. And so I think the more it's shown on other stations, that could detract from our possibilities of making that happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, clearly I didn't make the film for it to like, sit and not be shown. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to balance all that. And like, as we're doing film festivals right now and like grassroots screenings, just kind of start to accumulate all the information about that. Um, I'm also trying to get it on DQED. So we applied to what's called um, Truly California. And we won't care, sorry, we won't care for some <laughs> we probably won't care for some months, you know, whether that's going to happen or not, but, you know, it would be great to get a take Do they want you to make revisions or something to make it? No, uh, it's not about revisions, and we cut it specifically so that it's PBS link. Um, it's really just about the whole rigmarole of PBS. And I guess I would say, you know, there's politics in PBS, right? And so it has radical tendencies, <laughs> shall we say, and I don't know that that's how the water's flowing in PBS right now. So it kind of depends. But I'm grateful for all the support we've gotten from even just from KRCB. I mean, it meant a lot to me for my second film to just be like, if I make this broadcast quality, it'll be broadcast. You know, and that's not something that, you know, that's a really great gift. But yeah, by all means, if people are interested in setting up like screenings for in your community, for your family and friends or whatever, um, definitely let me know. The website for the film is beyondrecognitionfilm.com um, or I can be reached at michelle at underexposedfilms.com um, and so, you know, just get in touch if you want to do screenings. I know that somebody is working on, um, Annie is working on a private screening to do as a fundraiser for the Land Trust, so that's another option. But particularly like indigenous communities around the country, I'm really interested in people being able to use it as content for their own issues and their own fundraising situations. Mm -hmm. One more. Do you have a do you have like a cult, like a cultural exhibit uh, anytime soon, maybe on in your your uh, indigenous territories that people can attend? This uh, is it. We're <laughs> <laughs> on our land. We're on exhibit right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we have the, the actually we do the annual 
shell mound um, uh, protest at the mall the day after Thanksgiving, and we've done year 15, I think, now. Um, we have an annual um, day that we go back to Segorite um, to have ceremony and to share with one another, and people are invited to come, and that's going to happen, I think, April 11th this year. Um, so it's right, always right around the time that we did the occupation. The occupation was April 14th, um, and so it's usually right around that time. So we'll be up at Segorite. If people want to get on our list, my email is shellmoundwalk at yahoo.com, and I'll blast stuff out. If you want to find me on Facebook, it's very easy, Karina Gould, and I always post stuff up about where we're going to be doing stuff and what's happening. Um, so for sure, if you guys want to know about that kind of stuff, it's easy to find. So, One more thing about, um, about distribution of the film is that we're trying to get it into um, schools right now because um, I don't know how many folks grew up in California. I didn't, but as I'm aware of, that in fourth grade, people learn about the missions. And that's a huge chunk of curriculum out here that's mandatory in schools. And so we're actually working on trying to get this in as curriculum either in upper elementary or more likely like high school um, or university content. And so um, we actually had a conversation with somebody in Sacramento who does programming with schools and she's seen it and really enthusiastic about it. Um, it's not really possible to make things core curriculum at this point, but I think you know we're gonna be working on getting it out there. And if any of you folks happen to be in education or have connections in that way, definitely let us know. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you, I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're good? We're good to go. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.